Welcome to Get Teched, where I'm gonna help you be the life of the party. I'm Elizabeth, and today we're making a light up Christmas sweater. Every year you have a bunch of family gatherings and parties you have to go to around the holidays. You're always looking for that perfect sweater, the one that'll be the funniest, the coolest. But what if you could just make that sweater yourself? I'm talking about a light up holiday sweater. It's about to get lit up. We're gonna use Adafruit's wearables to help us design this. We've got the Adafruit main board, the Flora accelerometer, six tiny NeoPixels, conductive thread, a battery pack, and a few other essentials you need for stitching, like a needle, some regular thread, and a little bit of clear nail polish. That will all make sense in due time. Today what we're gonna do is light up Santa's eyes on this sweater. But we support all religions and celebrations and beliefs, so use any kind of sweater you want. Doesn't even have to be holiday, be creative. You can follow along on the GitHub Wiki. We found our inspiration on Adafruit's sparkle skirt tutorial. Thank you, Adafruit. The first thing we're gonna do is lay out the circuit on the sweater so we know how we wanna stitch it. So I'm gonna flip this inside out. It's very important to make sure that you are on the front and not the back. That would be a horrible mistake. So, luckily, I can see the back of mine. I can see where Santa's face is. So I know that I'm gonna wanna lay out my six pixels, one on each eye. So, the pixels actually have little arrows on them to tell you which way the data connection should go through. And they have a plus for the power and a negative for the ground. So when you lay those out, you want to think about the data connection coming from the Flora main board and going across your pixels. So with that in mind, ours would lay out like this, each going the same direction with the arrows. The next, you want to put your Flora main board close enough and with the connections close by so you're not crossing any of your stitching. So you'll need power, data pin number nine, and ground. You'll see that the board is gonna face in on the sweater and the NeoPixels will face out. Our accelerometer board will go on the top left of the Flora main board because that's where those connections line up. So this is the layout of my sweater. Yours will probably look a little bit different since you won't have this exact same sweater, but keep all this in mind when laying it out. So, first thing we need to do is stitch down the Flora main board to hold it in place. We're gonna use regular thread and put it through pins that we don't plan to use just to hold it down so it makes the rest of the stitching easier. I'm gonna move the other pieces off of the sweater since I know where they're gonna be and begin with that. I'm using red thread because it will hide very well within my sweater, but you can use any color you need. So you're gonna take your thread, pull out a little bit, cut, and thread it through your needle. So what I like to do is tie the end, just put a knot in it. That way I can pull the needle through that part to hook it when I'm stitching. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a second when I actually do it. So, just put a little double knot in there. And we are good to go. I'm gonna stitch through the number 12 pin since we're not using that. So, put my needle through. I don't pull all the way through, so I leave a little tail there that I can come back up. So, stitch through. And now, I'm going to put the needle before that knot we made. Okay. So now, it's solidly connected. So I'll do two more loops just to make sure it's a strong connection and this board won't fall off. So one, and then back up through the same spot that I came in the first time. If I can find it. Okay. So, you're going to cut this end 
And then take your two ends, your beginning one and your end one, and you're gonna do a double knot just to make sure that's secure. All right, I'm gonna cut off this excess string so it doesn't get in our way for the rest of the project. Now, we need to do that one more time, and I'm going to do it through the number 10 pin on the other side just to make sure it's sturdy and holds in place. And then again, we'll do it through the number 10 pin that we don't plan to use. So, put it in, don't pull it all the way through. Come back up very close to where you went in. All right, then stick it through before the knot. And now you've got it held in place. So, two more times through without poking yourself. And luckily, this sweater is pretty easy to sew through. It's not a thick material. There's a lot of loose, loose threading in it that allows me to put the needle through. So, went through twice. Cut this. And I'll do a double knot on the ends just to make sure this stitch stays in place. So now you can see, board's in place. So now we're gonna move on to the conductive thread. We're going to stitch the accelerometer board to the floor main board. So we'll line it up and lay it out so that ground goes to ground, SCL goes to SCL, SDA to SDA, and three volt to three volt. And none of those stitches will cross. That's the important part, is that you line all this up so that none of your stitches intersect and cause a short. The stitching with the conductive thread will be very similar to what we just did. Cut off a piece, thread it through the eye of the needle. We're not gonna knot it this time. What we'll do is we'll put our first stitch through on the ground piece. Pull it through, leaving the end in there. Come back out the other side. Okay. Now, what I'm gonna do is actually knot this end to hold it in place. So, do once and then twice. very tight, and then from there, we're going to use the clear nail polish. This will work like glue to hold that knot in place. So you take a little bit of it, put a dab on that knot, and you let it dry. The conductive thread doesn't hold as well as regular thread, and if you're not using something to hold those knots in place, they can come undone. We're gonna cut off this excess thread that could cause shorts if it comes in contact with other pieces of thread. And then we're gonna stitch through two more times just to make sure we have a good connection. That's once. This will be twice. And it's very important, make sure everything is tight. Because again, like I said, if anything causes a bad connection in this, it's gonna short your project. I'll do a little in and out stitch over to where the board's gonna be. So one in, one out. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing on this end of the board. So that was the ground. We're gonna stitch to ground. Put it through. All right. That's our first connection to the accelerometer. I'll do that two more times again, just to make sure we have a good connection. So, what I've done is I've pulled the needle 
through one of those stitches and now I'm gonna pull it tight to create a knot. Same thing again, using the nail polish to hold it tight. Cutting off the end of that thread so it doesn't touch other pieces and cause a short. So since I've shown you that first stitch, it's pretty much the same for the rest of them. We're gonna connect the SDA, the SCL, and the three volt, and then connect on the eyes, which are the power, the nine pin, and the ground. The hard part is now over. Everything is stitched on the sweater. Once you're done, go through, make sure none of your ends are frayed, nothing's gonna cause a short, everything is good. So now what we need to do is we need to test out the circuit before we load our code. So what you'll need to do that is Arduino IDE. You can download that from the link in the GitHub Wiki. From there, you're gonna go into Sketch, Include Library, Manage Libraries. What this does is add the libraries we need for the different accessories we have. There's gonna be four libraries that you add. The NeoPixel, the Unified Sensor, the TSL 2561, the LSM 303 DLHC. Once you install those four libraries, we're ready to test out the sweater to make sure it works. First thing we'll test is the accelerometer. We wanna make sure that that's connected and working. So what we're gonna do is connect our computer to the Flora main board. Okay, so you're gonna go to File, Examples, and the LSM303 DLHC. You're gonna do the Excel sensor, and it'll pull up that code. I need to make sure that it knows which port I'm using. So I'm gonna go in, and you'll see in there that it says USB modem Adafruit Flora. Next thing you're gonna do is upload that into the Flora main board. You'll see it says uploading at the bottom and it'll let you know once it's complete. Lights are blinking, that's a good sign. Okay, it says done uploading. So we'll open the serial monitor and from there you'll see X, Y, and Z coordinates. So if I start moving this around, you see all of those changing. That means it's working. Okay, so test one complete. You can close that. You're gonna go to File, Examples. You're gonna open up the Adafruit NeoPixel and we're gonna do a strand test. So what this does is make sure that all of your NeoPixels are connected and that they're all working. If one in the chain isn't working, the ones after it won't work either. So, we need to update. We're using pin number nine instead of pin number six. And instead of 60 in the strand, we only have six. Update that to whatever you're using for your setup. So once you do that, you're going to upload that into the Flora main board. So you'll see it says uploading, and then it says done uploading. So if I flip these over, you can see the lights flashing and turning on. So that means everything is connected and it's good. So now we can upload our final code. Awesome, so exciting. Okay, so exit out of that. Don't need to save. So, you can get the code from the GitHub Wiki and you can update it as you need for the pins you're using, the number of NeoPixels you're using. You can also update the colors. Currently in there is red, white, and green for the holiday. But you can put anything you want by changing the R, G, and B color numbers. The other update that you can make is the sensitivity to move. So the lower that number, the easier it's gonna pick up on your movement and actually cause the lights to illuminate. So if you put it very high, you probably have to jump up and down a lot to get them to turn on. But if you put it very low, any movement's gonna cause them to twinkle. So I'm going to upload our code into the floor main board. Okay, it says it's done uploading. So essentially, we can test it's working by moving the sweater around 
and you'll see different ones light up. Awesome, that means our code is successfully loaded and everything's working. So now what we need to do is we can't have it powered from the computer constantly, so we're gonna add our battery pack. Unplug, set this aside. So what I have here is a battery pack, but I can't just have it hanging off the sweater. So what I've done is I've cut out the corner of an old pillowcase that I'm no longer using. I'll be able to slip the battery in there, I'll stitch up the other side, and then I will stitch this to the back side of the sweater. So I can plug it in discreetly and it'll just hang on the inside. So I'm gonna do that now. Start at the bottom. Hook this through to make it extra secure. And now I'm just gonna do an easy loop around the outside just to keep it all in. This doesn't have to be any kind of nice. It's probably gonna look a little Frankenstein-y. That's okay, because no one's ever gonna see this unless you turn your shirt inside out and show them. And we're almost done. This is probably the quickest stitching part of this entire process. And then you just knot it through again, just to keep it tight. Cut off the ends. I'm gonna take one of the ends and stitch it through a different piece of the fabric so then I can make a knot with the two ends and it'll stay tight. Okay. So, I'm gonna stitch this just through here. So now I have the two ends of the string on separate sides and I'm gonna tie a double knot and then cut it off. So, once, and twice. Okay, cut off the excess so it doesn't get in the way. So we want this hanging so that it supports it and doesn't pull on your board. So if you attach it just a little bit higher so it can come down, that's perfect. So I'm now going to sew this onto the sweater so it just hangs off the back. Cut some thread, put it through the eye of the needle, and put a knot in the ends to secure it. Do it twice just to make the end knot just a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna put this on back side of the sweater about right up here. Take this out just to make it easier to sew. And again, this is on the back and it can be messy if it needs to because nobody is going to see this. Put the stitch through, put a little knot in, and then I am just going to do some loop stitching to hold it in place. Make sure that you don't catch the front side and accidentally sew your sweater shut so you can't wear it. That would be bad. Just needs to be on there so that it can hold the battery. You don't have to make it perfect. And I'm only gonna sew the top piece in. You can sew all the way around if you want, if you need to make it more secure, depending on what type of sweater material you have. Just so long as it holds the battery pack in there. A few more, just to make sure it's secure. Stitch it through, tie a knot. And then I'll sew this through another piece just so I can tie a knot with the two ends to make sure it stays. Okay. Now I'm gonna tie this in a double knot like I did on the last one. Once, 
and twice. Secure. So now I cut off the extra ends. I can slip in my battery pack. And then when I flip it over, I'm able to put this in here. Okay. So now you see it's connected and you turn it on. We can test it out, make sure it's working. And there you can see it's lit up. So we'll slide the battery pack back into its pouch and we'll turn our sweater right side out. What I would recommend doing though at this point is turning your battery pack off until you're ready to wear it so that you don't cause any shorts when you're flipping things inside out. Don't want any of the conductive thread to touch each other and that can easily happen when you're doing something like this. Now, I'm gonna put it on and show you how it works. You can now wear your sweater to all your gatherings and impress all your friends with your do-it-yourself light-up sweater. If you like this tutorial, please like the video, subscribe, and share with your friends. Tell us on social media the ones that you've made so we can see them. And until next time, enjoy the holidays.